Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen. Find out about all their great utilities at smilesoftware.com. Mac Voices is at NAB in Las Vegas. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, Oliver Breidenbach of Boink Software. Oliver, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to be back here. I, I, it's great. You missed last year. I missed last year. Uh, yeah, it didn't work out timing-wise, so yeah. Well, but this year you're back with a new version of Mimo Live, and uh, you've got a great setup, and it's good to see you. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's great to be back, and uh, we have uh, indeed new software. Uh, we are here at the NDI booth, uh, at the NDI uh, pavilion, uh, because Mimo Live now is a very uh, good NDI citizen. We can take NDI input and play out to NDI. Uh, so it's a good um, graphics generator for your TriCaster, or we can use all the new NDI cameras that are coming out from Panasonic, PTC Optics, from NewTek. Uh, we can use the new uh, Skype uh, for podcasters, I think it's called, or media products producers or something like that. Uh, we can use that, and, uh, and we are here at the NDI booth to show what we can do. Okay, so first question. For the audience that doesn't know, what does NDI stand for? Uh, NDI uh, is uh, NewTek's um, protocol for replacing basically a video connection between two uh, devices. So if you have a camera, you want to get it into your computer, you usually have to run an HDMI or SDI cable, and then you have to have a little box that takes the video signal, converts it to something your computer can understand. And you can get rid of all of that with NDI, which is a protocol that transmits video over the network, uh, over IP networks. Uh, it's called Network Device Interface. Uh, and basically, you can use a camera, connect that to your Ethernet, and then the camera will show up in Mimo Live as a video source. Got it. OK. Now, let's go to Mimo Live, because you've been here before to talk about Mimo Live, but for some of the new viewers who may not be familiar with it, it's basically a television studio you know, in, in software. You're much better at explaining it than <laughs> I am. I, I like to call it the TV truck without the truck, uh, because it does everything uh, that uh, you can do with uh, a TV truck, switching cameras, graphics generation. Uh, we, we do uh, social media integration. You can show. You can react to comments that are on the live streams if you stream to Facebook, to YouTube. Uh, we can do show Twitter feeds like we do here, um, and uh, Instagram photos and, and all the kind of uh, that crazy uh, interesting stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then create a video and stream that live or record it even if you don't want to do live streaming. Yeah, and I think that's one of the key things for, for me to remember is that it's not necessarily no, scratch that. You don't have to stream. You can just use it as a recording studio if that suits you. Yeah, so the trick is, of course, if you want to do video, um, uh, you want to have as little uh, uh, production effort as possible. And that means uh, you have to do live production. Even if you don't stream live, uh, doing it all live, doing all the switching and the adding the lower thirds saves you a ton of time later. Um, and for a lot of content that's you don't, where you don't want to, or you don't have to tweak it so that it's just perfect, um, that's the right way to produce content because it's cheap and, and fast. Um, and that's where Mimo Life is the uh, best tool on the Mac. Now we've got it running over here in several instances, um, I, and, and we can talk about the desktop. But I'm especially interested in what's going on on the iPad. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, the iPad and the Mac uh, uh, coexist quite nicely in the Mimo Life universe. For example, we do have a remote control on the iPad that allows you to do control Mimo Life on the Mac. We do have an app uh, called Mimo Life Reporter that allows you to go out, uh, you know, into the wild and use the LTE or a 4G connection of your phone or iPad to call back into the studio so you can send out reporters to interviews, get eyewitness reports and stuff like that. And here uh, we're showing a new version of uh, Photo Presenter for iOS, which is an, a little app we developed uh, specifically for a use case where uh, you do a presentation, but you don't have like a script. Uh, for example, we have a customer doing that in an aquarium, and there's like fish, and they want to talk about the fish. And you don't know which fish is going to be swimming up uh, at any time, so you can't do a scripted thing. So there's like a, a shark coming, and she pulls up, you know, the picture of the shark. 
uh, and the diagram of how it works or something like that. And uh, you can do that with Photo Presenter. And now with NDI support, um, the video that goes out can be also seen um, uh, on on the um, uh, on on the, on on the computer. Um, and uh, we do have a little network trouble here, so. Um, it, uh, Gee, on, on the on the NAB show floor, I can't imagine any network trouble. There, there are only several thousand devices here. Yeah. So one thing that's happening is that we um, we we seem to be getting new IP numbers all the time. So the connection doesn't work because the IP setting doesn't. So uh, photo presenter. Uh, here I have the uh, iPad app, and as you can see, there's all my my pictures, and sometimes I have pictures on my iPad. I don't want my audience to see. So they get to see the photo presenter thing uh, while I scan my library and find the picture I want to show. Then I click on it, and um, here we are with uh, Woz and uh, the Apple One. Uh, my brother and me uh, visited with him in Hanover and got him to sign the Apple One. And we can um, also go into the uh, into the, the image and then highlight, you know, parts of it. And uh, so that aids you in, you know, talking about something, telling a story, where you don't have the like the the keynote, uh, you know, scripted slideshow. Uh, it's more like a show and tell thing. You know. So back to Mimo Live, because this, I mean that's sort of the star of the show right here, right now. Um, you, you've added new capabilities. It's one of those interfaces. You've walked me through it. And it takes a little getting used to, but once you understand it, it's really not as yeah. complex as it looks. Yeah, also we improved that even more with the new version because now we have like a, a workflow from the left to the right. So this is all your input. This is all the magic that happens with your input, like uh, switching and graphics and stuff. Here uh, we have like an overview. This is called a multi-view. Shows you all the video sources or an overview of all your video sources. You can also use that to switch uh, if you have a switcher. Uh, you can use that to control a PTC camera. Um, so you just click in in the in the multi view in the preview of your source, and you can just move it around, and the camera will just uh, move. And then we have the outputs, and these are all the outputs you've configured. Your live streams, your recording to the disk, you play out to a second screen your player to NDI to SDI. Uh, this is all listed here, and you have an overview of what's going on. So it's a, a nice uh, you know, input to output workflow. And it's different from the traditional switcher model, uh, because we think uh, the traditional switcher model requires people to learn a lot about video production. And this is really easy as you know, pressing a button to put something live. And um, so we think our um, our workflow model is is much more intuitive to to learn and uh, to use than you know the traditional switcher layout. It, it it definitely makes a lot more sense as it is now, because you've set up a whole lot of things. Most people, at least getting started, are not going to have anything nearly that complex. They're not going to have that many uh, options. They're not going to have that many cameras. But now, how about um, we're talking about getting cameras into the Mac? Do we have the option to bring in things wirelessly, like iPhones, at this point? Um, yeah. For, for example, with NDI, it's, it's, you know, they they may NewTek makes a little app called the uh, New NDI Camera. Uh, it's on the iPhone, and then you can do um, you know as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi uh, as the computer and the same network, um, you can just use the iPhone camera uh, as a camera source. Perfect. That's very easy, and you can have multiple cameras, multiple iPhones, um, uh, all uh, you know coming into the in, into Mimo Live. Now I know you don't have it set up here, but you also have an app on the iPhone. Uh, pardon me, on the iPhone or iPad that can be a control surface for Mimo Live, so that if I'm doing a production myself, I may not want to be looking at, at all of that. I may just have a couple key things like switching between cameras. Yeah, sure. So. So this is uh, this looks very complex because it's all the options you can set up, right? Uh, and our philosophy in this regard is that uh, if we hide them, you're never going to discover them. So we show you all the options, but we try to make it so that you don't have to uh, get in and and do uh, you know set the last thing, 
to get a result. So everything is set up like in a default uh, that makes sense. So you don't have to do a lot of configuration to get started, but you can go in and tweak stuff. Um, but when you run the show, you don't want to see all that. You you just want to have like the switches, the, you know, the six cameras and the two lower thirds, and then you can just press a button and, and switch between those. And it's an it's a, it's I, I can actually show it to you. Um, um, if you uh, have you noticed that if you use try to use the the interface in the uh, so um, we we have this uh, control surface and you now you have these buttons and you can assign the buttons to you know s switching for example at the at the uh, switcher layer here uh, video switcher drag that in and now I have like eight buttons that uh, represent the video switcher and I can press just the, the button to do the switching. And switching it right up there. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Very and nice. This is like a web app, so it works basically on a second Mac, on iPads, on your Android device, whatever. Oh, I didn't realize it was a web app. It's a web app, yeah. So we have a we have an iPhone app, an, I, an I, iOS app. Uh, that wraps the uh, the uh, the web app, so it's easier to discover. So you don't have to type in like your IP number and, and stuff like that. So it shows you all the uh, instances of Vimeo Live on your network, with what, what documents are available, and allows you to browse to the correct uh, remote control surface. But the com uh, the control surface itself, it's a is, is a basically a web app. Great. Okay, so let's get into pricing on some of this because there's a lot here, and I want to make sure we get it all. So let's start with Mimo Live. So Mimo Live is uh, comes in three uh, tiers. Uh, we we have now uh, uh, licenses that are valid for a certain time. Uh, I I'm hesitant hesitant to call them subscriptions, but they are subscriptions basically. So let's uh, say. Um, Using Mimo Life as a private person for one year is $199. Um, uh, for a commercial um, operation, it's $799. So basically, you get a steep discount as a private person. Um, and the broadcast corporations, uh, they, they have to pay like $1,700 a year. Um, and that's the pricing, uh, which allows us to move forward in the innovation, uh, keeping up with all the uh, Mac OS uh, system releases and still, you know, make a living. Yeah, and we've talked about subscription models before. You know, they're controversial at this point, but I think they're they're necessary in today's world to keep the software development going. Well, especially with something like this, where uh, you expect the uh, application to follow all the innovations in the market, like NDI. What, what, uh, what good would it be if we had to wait another year to ship NDI just so we can? charge people an upgrade fee they want it now and it should be there now um, and uh, if you have a valid subscription you download the latest version and you got the, the latest stuff you know? exactly and that's I mean that's what I, I think that one of the keys to the subscription model is that the developer keeps rolling out enhancements bug fixes those kind of things and that's what you're doing with Nemo live yeah since we've started uh, with the new model we've shipped over 20 releases so uh, we, we, uh, we are adding new stuff at a crazy pace and, uh, and uh, it's a lot of fun for us and, and, and so if, if, you know, this is how it should be and how it works, you know. Uh, if I look at other people where, you know, uh, they bring out new releases every year and they charge people an upgrade fee uh, and then um, the, the, um, the, the, the you know, it's it's not cheaper for the people in the in the long run to do the, to follow this model, but they uh, they always have to wait a year and to get the latest and greatest stuff. You know, so yeah, so it, it is what it know, is. Like Facebook uh, changing their policies, now we have to do an update, and as as soon as we can, we're gonna ship it. I mean, it's like it's not we have, we we're not waiting until next year to ship it to, you know. So, yeah. And that is a great example too of, of you need to be responsive to the environment. Yeah. Um, photo presenter, what, what uh, pricing on that? Uh, photo presenter is free. Uh, um, the if you want to use the NDI feature, which is a pro feature, it's a ninety-nine dollars a year subscription. 
um, which is kind of expensive for an iOS app, but uh, as I said, the use case is very, very specific. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a niche uh, for the NDI stream out. But if you want to use it at your school, um, you know, just uh, with the projector in the, the classroom, you don't have to do NDI. You can do AirPlay over the Apple TV or something like that. And so, uh, and that's free. Got it. And of course, there's a lot of other great software at, uh, at your website, which is? B-O-I-N-X, boinks.com. Uh, and yeah, uh, we, we are open for business. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, thanks so much for the time. Very nice products. Great to see you as always. Yeah, thanks, you. thanks for uh, having me on the show again. And I'm um, looking forward to the next. We will do it. Yes, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Folks, more from NAB in Las Vegas. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.